Hey, this is Or Washington. This is part two of the of the Or Washington rant series. You are the Antichrist. Um, we we're going to start off this time uh, further in First John chapter two. Is where I left left off it. But first, I want to um, share this um share a verse of scripture First John one that I didn't get to mention in, in part one and stuff. And I know I know a lot of people gravitate towards this um, particular verse. And I'm gonna read it again, then I'm explaining to you what this verse is talking about, which is going to um, correlate to what what I'm reading later on in First um, John chapter two uh, later on and stuff. But this verse says says this. Um, it says this in in First John chapter two is verse three. And it says this, and and this, and by this we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. Who verse four also said, whoever says I know him but does not keep his commandment is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But but whoever keep his word in him truly the love of God has perfected it. Now the the reason why I want to mention this on uh, scripture is because uh, I know that uh, we uh, you know we we have uh, people um, um, you know several people who you know who who believe in you know what I'm saying keeping the the actual commandments and stuff like that when they see the word commandments and stuff um uh, automatically it goes and gravitate back to you know um the not only the law of Moses and stuff but it also goes gravitates back to the actual Ten Commandments written in, in the book of Exodus and stuff and and many people that gravitate to that and they always start saying like you know yeah this is what we're supposed to do we're supposed to keep God's law we're supposed to keep his commandments and all this stuff there and stuff you know what I'm saying to you know to convey a point and stuff you know what I'm saying but I want to want to share a different perspective about that if you if you will allow me to and stuff you know what I'm saying, but first of all you know what I'm saying not not uh, before I say all all this you know what I'm saying I'm not um disagreeing with you know anyone who um who you know who buys from the commandments who want to keep the ten commandments I'm not disagreeing with you whatever stuff like that you know what I'm if 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 you feel in your heart if that's going to uh, allow you to be a righteous person that's going to sustain you where you can practice righteousness and stuff like that. By all means, do it. I, there's no wrong in it whatsoever, stuff like that. So don't let dogmatic, uh, you know, preachers and uh, all the stuff there that they try to debate against you against that. You know, to my way, it's all about the well, what the law was on, the law, the letters dead, and all the stuff there is all about being saved by grace and all the stuff there. Stuff. If you feel that keeping the Ten Commandments is going to sustain you once again, then by all means, doing it because that's going to keep you um. And in your salvation rank, that's gonna keep you um pretty much out of uh as an old saying saying out of hell's fire. Likewise, the same way, you know what I'm saying? If a person feels that, you know, um they feel that grace is the, the, the thing, you know what I'm saying? That you know, living by grace, living by that grace and that righteousness, living by the promise and stuff like that and stuff, you know what I'm saying? They feel that living by grace is gonna keep them out of the hell fire, then why not? Live it and stuff, you know what I'm saying? That's this, these things uh, I learned throughout the time, uh, especially me going through different debates about this, um, this touchy topic. Is that, in other words, all this is on one and the same, it doesn't matter. Um, longest you want, uh, longest these things is letting you practice righteousness and stuff, right? For once, a, once, a, once again, like I said in part one, longest is on um, getting you closer to the creator. On uh, the Most High God, long as it's um, letting you get close to yourself, where you practice righteousness and giving knowledge and and approving yourself, long as it's teaching you to love your neighbors and stuff as well, long as it's um, teaching you to love nature itself as well, then why not do it and stuff? Practice it. There ain't nothing wrong with it at all and stuff. You know what I'm saying? That's all I'm saying about this matter and stuff. So, with that being said and stuff, um. Um. Do well. Well, with that being said, so I was going to explain about the you know what this scripture is talking about, but we'll explain that later. Or if you want to just um comment on it about what that scripture is talking about, I'll I'll send a while. I'll comment on that. Talk personally about that particular scripture I was reading. But now I'm saying all this because now we we get into um verse seven of chapter uh two of First John, uh, starting at. Verse 7, it says this, um, Beloved, 
I am writing, I am writing to you no new commandment, but an old commandment that you have for be, have from the beginning. The old commandment is the word that you have heard. At the same time, it is a new commandment that I'm writing to you, which is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. Who whoever says he is in the light and hates his brother is still in darkness. Whoever loves his brother abides in the light, and in him there is no cause for stumbling. But whoever hates his brother is in, in the darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he's going because darkness has blinded his eyes. And I'm going to stop right there for a few seconds. Now, this um, this verse of one scripture is basically pretty much confirming what I was telling you while explaining earlier to you about the one about the commandment and stuff like that and stuff. So in the, so in other words, the stuff um uh when it's time I say I'm not right right to you no new commandment but an old commandment that you have had from the beginning. Basically, what it's talking about is that it's saying the same exact thing, but the new commandment, you know, what I'm saying, which is you know, want Christian teach you about the new commandment by loving God and and loving your neighbor stuff like that. All that deals is though the old commandment, but simplified into the simplest terms and stuff. When you break down the one, the actual one commandments, the Ten Commandment and the Mosaic Law, it has several parts to it. The first part is dealing with loving God. Loving the Creator, it's a loving God, the Creator, and so then the second part deals with loving yourself, loving, loving your neighbor, and loving you know um nature and things around it and stuff like that. That's the whole Ten Commandments broken down to a simplest term, and that's the basically that's the whole Mosaic Law broken down to a simpler term. Because if you go back into the Mosaic Law, that's exactly what the Mosaic Law is talking about. So it's talking about things about. Loving God is talking about things loving yourself, it's things talking about loving people, and it's things talking about loving nature and stuff. So that's why I was saying about different things about like say for example, it's saying about you know, um uh, you you know you shouldn't uh, eat a dead carcass and stuff like that because that's nature. Common sense will tell you that you shouldn't eat nothing that's dead, but it has to be uh, fully cooking and stuff like that and stuff. Then there's other then there's certain things in nature that you shouldn't even eat at all. So because it's not gonna uh, it's not going to balance you out and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Because God knows it's not going to balance you out and stuff like that and stuff. It's not healthy for you and stuff, you know what I'm saying? That's to break that down and stuff, you know what I'm saying? About the Mosaic Law and what it's talking about and stuff. So back to what the scripture is talking about. It's talking about the, the commandment. It's not, it ain't nothing. No, it's still the same thing and stuff, but it does been simplified. So, so in other words, I call it, it has been dummified and stuff where people... Uh, with the simplest mind can understand what it's talking about without doing all this extra stuff It's telling you in the simpler terms what it's talking about and stuff You know what I'm saying so back to what this time about is stuff um what it's still saying is this is that if you if you have this um Commandment in your heart written in your heart. It's no way Impossible for you to be walking in darkness and stuff. You'll be actually walking in light. You'll have the light of the Most High God in you and stuff, you know what I'm saying? It'll be impossible uh, for you to even sin because you have the Most High God light in you and stuff, you know what I'm saying? So that's what it's talking about. And so then later it's talking about now if you proclaiming that you have this light, you confessing that you have this light and you have these attributes of the Most High God and stuff, but yet and still you hate your brother. For whatever reason it is, whether it's a lifestyle, whether it's a gender reason, whether it's propaganda, whatever it is and stuff like that. If you hate your brother, you automatically disqualify yourself from having a light. In other words, you don't have the creator uh, heart in you whatsoever and stuff. It doesn't exist. It's non-existent. You are a liar and the truth is not in you at all and stuff. So this is what this um, this is what this um, pastor script is talking about. Even talking about... um. I'm talking about, you know what I'm saying, you being blinded. It's so the reason why it's saying that you're being blinded is because you letting your you letting your personal desires and stuff like that um dictate to you that this is absolutely true. A matter of fact, um I'm pretty sure that that you um that that many of you have dealt with different people and stuff like that who um deal with different people and stuff like that who no matter what you tell them and stuff like that, their truth is absolute truth, and no matter what you say. They're not gonna even um 
rationalize what you they're not going to even consider what you saying their truth is their truth and that it does what it is stuff like that that's that's the one same example of a person who's being blinded if they're not open to listening to um certain uh, suggestions or certain corrections to edify their being that the truth is not in them and stuff like that that's a propaganda they are preaching and uh the truth is not in them whatever the most high god spirit is not in them at, at all the stuff and this is what this on scripture is talking about and stuff you know what i'm saying now let's go further down to uh first john uh chapter 2 um uh, verse 12 we're going to go through verse 12 through 14 and stuff and read this it says i'm mean, writing i am writing to you little children because your sins are forgiven for his name's sake i am writing to you fathers because you know him who is from the beginning i am writing to you young man because you have overcome the evil one i am writing to you children because you know the father i'm writing to you fathers because you you know him who is from the beginning i am writing to you young man because you are strong and the word of god abides in you and you have overcome the evil one now I am a, a big person about wordplay, about English language, about um, the, the lyrics that this particular verse is talking about. First of all, this particular verse of scripture now, it changes. It's going into a more poetic form and stuff. It's going into a more poetry form and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Uh, them straight, just regular, you know, scripture or what they, what they talk about this stuff. Uh, notice that that it uh, that it, that it mentions several times about little children. It mentions several times about the young man, and it mentions several times about the father. Because this uh, this the writer is actually trying to per portray a particular message, um, what it's talking about. And so, the first of all, when it's talking about, I write it to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven for His name's sake. Now. Well, what this time about, and I'm telling you this in simpler terms, what this time about, why I keep mentioning this, is because of this. Um, many of you, you know, you have children and stuff like that, or you know, you was a child at one point in time. And you did messed up stuff when you was a child. The reason why you did messed up stuff as your child, because you just learning. It was just a growing pain. It was just a process of you learning and stuff. And that's the, that's the one parent. The parent learns to forgive that child. They may discipline the child and teach them the errors of their way, but they forgive the, forgive the child and stuff like that. And stuff. So this is what these two things are talking about is that, hey, you because of who you connected with, because of you, who your father is and stuff like that, you are forgiven from the mistakes that you made and stuff. You know what I'm saying? That's because you make mistakes. That doesn't mean that you're not, not perfect, which is going on to a later rant and stuff. Preview. But just because you made a mistake, that doesn't mean that you're, you're, you're not perfect and stuff like that. That's what this is talking about and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Then, when it's talking about to the fathers, it's saying, um, it says, I'm writing to you because you know him who is from the beginning. This is talking about, this is giving an example of not only a talking about what, what happened in the beginning with Adam, but it's also talking about wisdom as well. A father's betrayed as a person who has wisdom and knowledge. So the father is the one who's actually connected to everything. He's actually the source of everything and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Since the father is all knowing and stuff like that, he's connected to every every single one aspect of everything and stuff. You know what I'm saying? And finally the last part of this is stuff is talking about the um uh the young man. The young men and so when it's talking about the young men and stuff on who overcame and stuff like that, it's talking, it's actually talking about the, the trials of life that you overcome and stuff, the stuff, the temptations of the world, the things that have been putting out to you in the world and stuff like that, that you, that the young men have overcome that and stuff, you know what I'm saying? They, they overcome in other words, the evil one and stuff like that, they overcome the world and stuff. So my time is way up from this rent. Hopefully this post, if not, I'm going to have to do this all over again. But until then, fight faith with faith, um, and God bless y'all. See y'all for part three.